Hello guys, Steve Stockham, Sunset Billiards here in Salina, Kansas. We're going to run over uh, doing a valley table here real quick. So I'm going to get started, go ahead and take the rails off and we'll see where we get. Got, uh, this is basically the three parts to it. You take this part, clamp it on here, slide that down. That little spider goes inside there. all my pieces up here. These roller blocks are going to go underneath here. We're going to lift uh, the slate up, set it down on these, and then rotate it. So I'll get these out of the way for a second. don't happen to have it with me today, so... Alright, when I turn the slate, I always unscrew it, and when I put it back in, I screw it that way. So unscrew it goes this way. That way I just remember which side was the head, which side was the foot. So that makes pretty nice work of that. I use a uh, packing blanket so we don't scratch the flanca up. We'll need to bring this all the way down. Just when it gets off this roll, it's about the right place to be on the table for taking this felt off. some kind of cloth for when we uh, do the spray adhesive and this stuff will tear right down the line and it'll give you two nice little overspray cloths.
kind of going to leave that a little damp. Won't hurt a thing. You want to inspect this pretty good when you uh, when you put it on. Make sure there's no fibers underneath it. It's a uh, kind of a chore to take it back off to fix a little fiber that gets underneath it, and it will definitely show. Now this side has a band on it. It's the border. I like to leave about two and a half, three inches. Start with. And this is a little different. Most table mechanics do the ends first, then the edge. I uh, I use these little clamps just to kind of stretch it a little bit. Just so somebody holds it in place. Not a ton, but it's enough to kind of hold it for me. Then I work on this one edge, I get it nice and straight, I'll move the slate over to the other edge, and then we'll pull the crap out of the ends. We'll actually pull the other edge pretty tight too, but in this case we're trying to get a nice straight line. There is a grain to this, I mean you can see the fibers. If you just pull it, you'll get this weaving going back and forth. It's a lot better just to uh, eliminate that. Now this cloth I cut, that's what they're going to be for here. Again, some mechanics use a spray adhesive on the slate and the, uh, the fabric. Diamond tables put the, oh, like a contact cement and they roll it on both. I have never had luck rolling it on the fabric, so I do use the spray adhesive for that. But I do use contact cement on the slate. And it's just a well wood contact cement. I use a three inch roller. And I usually roll it before I spray it. The key here is when you roll it on, don't get it too wide. You don't want any pass where the rails will sit on it. So this puts a nice even coat on it. So you get a good glue good contact. I'm going to make sure you don't get it in front of the side pockets up in the top part. That will stop a ball from going in because this glue will set up and get kind of hard later. I know that from experience. I had one table that had that problem. I had a big tournament and of course somebody shot a ball soft, it rolled up there and then rolled back away. And it's not supposed to do that. So again, try to make sure you don't get any glue right in front of where the pockets are. All right. I use the number 77 uh, 3M glue. It, uh, the 90 is more yeah, it's a, it has a little more strength, but not really necessary. You, this glue helps out a tremendous amount. And you notice there's a little bit of overspray it gets around. Again, that's why we've got this cloth on it. That takes uh, about five minutes to get good and tacky. So in the meanwhile, we will pick out all the pieces of chalk and what 
money we could find. <laughs> There's usually quite a few pieces down in here. Now I normally vacuum them every time. I will not this time because just for the sake of speeding the video up. And they're not too bad because like I said I just did them not that terrible long ago. But we are in the uh, 2020 coronavirus shutdown. I have 30 days at least to work on these so I decided I'd go ahead and redo them while I didn't have anything better to do. That way when we open back up they're going to be prime and ready to go. Most table mechanics use a razor blade to cut out these side pockets and so forth. I was an upholsterer for 30 some years, so I'm just used to scissors. So that's what I normally use. You cut these slots, you want to stay about three quarters of an inch, maybe a half inch away from the edge. That way when you pull it down, it, it hides it. That's uh, stuck real good next to the side. That's what we want. We come down to the end and stretch the crap out of it. Trying to seek a nice straight line here. Again, most table mechanics do the ends first, then the sides. I, uh, like I said, for the poster for 30 years, I kind of like this method. So. Seems like I have a little better control of the table. camera over here and maybe when I do the other side there'll be a little bit better view but I'll try to show you that how the straight line really helps start it off in the right direction. Another tool that will really help is a good roller. I've gone through a bunch of different rollers. Most of them kind of fail on you after a while. I bought this one, I think on Amazon. It's a, a steel roller with ball bearings. I've had it for several years and it's still, and I'll show you that here in a sec, it's still in real good shape. Makes a difference.
Okay, so we just reverse everything and bring it to this side of the tape. Again, these little clamps are not totally necessary, but I like them because it just kind of holds stuff in place. It's not near as tight as we'll be pulling it later, but it gives us a good start. You note there's a little ridge in here that will pull out when we pull that side. It's caused because we stretch the two ends and the center's not stretched yet. So that's the reason for that. Now if you're using the championship, this is, you need about yay much. I'm going to cut this off almost exactly flush with the table. If you're using Simonis, don't do this. You don't have enough to stretch it. But that's the smallest you'll need that four inches. With this, it just kind of gets in the road. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and glue this out. Then the other thing I do that's different than most is I wet the fabric down. This helps it stretch it, and it really makes it taut when you're done. It's a wool base, so it will really tighten up after you wet it down and it dries. Again, being careful not to get too far out. You just want about inch and a half, two inches. You don't need all the extra string. Again, when you're doing this uh, round inside the side pocket, be careful not to get the glue out over the top, meaning up in here. If you do, just take a wet rag and kind of clean that off. Every once in a while your spray can will uh, spit out a little bit of blobs of glue. When that happens, just kind of wipe it up. It mostly is not a problem, but... Alright, we'll take this off. And now I'm going to wet it down. And when I say wet it down, I mean you get it pretty dang wet. This usually takes a while to do with the spray bottle, but, but you'll see that I cut that pretty close right to the edge. By the time we stretch it, we're going to have three or four inches extra. So that's about how much it'll stretch, about three, four inches. If you don't do this, you get about two inches out of it. So you get an extra couple inches. 
And that extra couple inches will keep it really taut later on. All right. I bought a sponge and a, we're going to try that and see if that helps us speed up the wetting it down process. And again, when you wet it down, if you have water standing, that's okay. It can be, just try to avoid getting it wet, clear out here where you're going to have to glue a little bit later when we do the ends. A little water's not terrible, but you don't really want it wet. You want the glue to stick good. And I try to get it wet back here where the glue's already set so that it eases out evenly. This is my uh, first time video in this, so the sound quality may not be very good. I may be standing in front of the camera half the time so you can't see. So, you know, it's a, it's a trial and error type thing. But I thought it might be nice to uh, get a video out there. When I was looking for videos on how to cover tables years ago, I couldn't find really anything or very little. So I thought, well, I'll show people the way I do it. Who knows, maybe it'll catch on. Still just a tad wet. my glasses on here because I'm old and I can't see as well as I used to. All right, we start off with this. We will pull it this way and then pull it in just a little bit to get a little tuck right there. That way we know we have enough for the uh, side pocket. I don't know if you can see that, but we got about four inches. And again, I cut that off about flush. On this corner down here, I cut up at a 45 right to the corner. Same with this side. Then I cut my slots again. About a half inch, three quarters of an inch away. You really don't want the slots way up inside the side pocket.
This cut's kind of the same way. You aim right for that bottom corner. So you're coming right to this corner. Then with a little bit left over, you kind of fold that on itself and cut that little bit off. You'll have just a little tab sticking out. Find my tools at the helm. Well, there it is. Probably the thing that slows me down the most is keeping track of my tools. Alrighty, on that, I just kind of tap that back. It's got glue on it, so it's not going to go anywhere. Roll that in, catch these corners real good. And then just pull the bejesus out of this. Again, all the time trying to get that straight line along that edge. If I had a cameraman here, I'd have him come over here and show you kind of what that looks like. But it's a little tricky by yourself. You don't want a whole lot folded up underneath there, so just trim that off. Make sure you don't have any bubbles. It'll have a tendency to want to bubble up right, right there. If it does, this sits on a support board, and you don't want it to be enough because of a big wrinkle. Much harder to level. The roller really helps a lot. It uh, seats it down good so you know it's sticking. Again, 45 degree into that corner. Got a little more than we need on there. Now the wetting it down thing, the story behind that is I talked to a guy out in Vegas that was a table mechanic for 30 some years and that's what he started doing. I was a little leery of it. I talked to a friend in Wichita named Joe. He uh, owns sticks down there and he told me that's what he did. So between the two of them I believe it. And I've been doing it for the last oh, 10 years or so. And you can see that really tightens that up and then I got a lot of pull I can get out of these ends. So I just think it's better to do the sides first, then the ends. I think you get a little bit better pull out of it.
We'll get this glued up and then I'll wet that down over there a little bit while this is setting. When you pull this back, you go just past the corners because you got it pretty much glued up to there and you haven't done the pockets yet. So, and again, we don't need a ton of extra on here, so. And when you put the spray adhesive on it, you don't need all that extra to goober up. Again, next time I do this, I might uh, have my wife come down and run the camera so you can see this a little closer. Again, when you're putting this on, I usually tip the brush. That way it doesn't get up on the top. I'm real cautious of that. Like I said, I had that one tournament where, and of course it was a really good player that the ball rolled back on. And he made sure he told everybody in the building that <laughs> it was wrong. Kind of embarrassing. I figure I do uh, 16 tables is what I have here. If, uh, if there's glue sticking out on one pocket, eh, it's actually pretty decent odds, but still, one bad pocket's one too many. And that's why you need the two pieces of uh, that cloth that you that you just cut down the middle. What you take off. And I happen to have a whole bunch of them right now because I think this is the ninth or tenth table I've done. So I got a bunch of them laying around. But probably can't see it, but I did get just a little bit of glue up there. Thing I'm telling you not to do. But again, it's okay. I'll just take a wet cloth to make sure we get it off. Spray this end real well because that's where the little pulls are going to be for the pockets. I want to make sure they stick well. Again, if one of them comes down, and I don't know why, but pool table or pool players are notorious for standing around, putting their hand in the pocket, and kicking underneath there. And that's why I put the tape on it because this makes it he can't get a hold of it. It does make it a pain in the butt to take apart. But like I said, I do them once every two years. I'd rather that stayed for two years and not be a problem than, than not do it and then have to tear the whole... Because you've got to take the table about to this point to fix it. Not quite this far, but dang near. All right, I was going to spray this down, get it a little bit wetter. The reason for that is, I've already stressed it, but I want this to ease out evenly. So if this is wet and it starts easing here, what little bit it's going to, it'll all be even, so the felt won't be tighter. You know, over there where it was really wet. So.
going to take just a minute or so to dry out. My biggest problem when I do this is usually I get impatient and I try to stick stuff before it's ready. You need to give it the five minutes or so. In the meanwhile, I tell you a blonde joke, but I'm not much of a joke teller, so we'll just keep working. <laughs> yeah, I wish my, my wife's working today. If she'd have been off, she could have come down and kind of run the camera for you, but you can kind of see this grain. It's got a nice straight line here, nice straight line there, and then what we pull this way will not make that much difference, but we're going to pull it pretty good to make sure we get keep the straight lines and then really tighten it up. See, it's got a little bit of slack in it. When we're done, it won't have any of that. If you ever have a table that's real loose and it has a good cotton uh, felt on it, if you wet it down, let it dry overnight, it'll tighten itself back up. I had a spill on one of my tables and it was so bad I wound up pouring about three cups of water on it to clean it up and it got the felt super, super wet and it was bagging. And I thought, well, I'll probably wind up redoing that table. The next morning it was tight as a drum because that's what happens with uh, wool. I think I said cotton, but wool, it's 80% wool. That's what happens with wool, it'll, it'll tighten up. So if you got one that's kind of loose, Pour some water on it, it'll, you know, let it set and dry, it'll tighten itself back up. All right, this looks pretty good, so. And before I cut the pockets out, I'm going to uh, go down the other end and pull it up and make sure I didn't pull it too far because I pulled that pretty tight. But it looks like it's fine. Again, there's a line kind of running down right there. You want to try to line that up and pull it tight. Same with this side, this is curved way over. Now, if you remember, if I trimmed these, and I still got a lot to trim because we pulled it that much. Which is kind of what you want. You make sure you're pulling it tighter than, tighter than just laying on there. Again, two little 45s going up to that corner. The reason for the 45 is when you put the pocket in there, you want something that to, the slate for it to glue to. 
if you just cut it straight, it would be in the road. Again, I hope the audio is all right on this. If not, I may have to dub it in later. But my first attempt at making a video for this. You cut this about two inches from where the groove would be, pretty close. Then cut your little slots in it again, leaving uh, about three quarters, maybe just a tad less, because you want to pull it a little bit. Again, about two inches, kind of arch it the same. On these, I just line straight up at the side and cut up to it, right up to the corner. That way it's got a slate to stick to. This folds back, which doesn't show at all, but then I trim it out just a little bit so you can kind of rock it back and then tap it down. Normally I would suggest a little hammer, but this works real well. probably should make a video for on how to do the rails. I have the rails for these already done. I do them at uh, my shop at my house. Like I said, I was an upholster for 30 years, so I have all the tools I need at home to, and better lighting. And so I work on rails and stuff at home. If I could do this at home, I would, but it doesn't work out that way. Plates a little heavy to carry
All right. We'll wet down the two ends to make sure it's wet all the way to the end. Like I said, normally I, uh, I vacuum the inside of this, clean these all up. They're not in too bad a shape, so. I'm going to go ahead and wipe down the Wipe down the pockets here, clean them up. They're not too terrible dirty. Again, my staff is doing a real good job of vacuuming the table, so that makes a world of difference. And we do vacuum every day, every morning. I have been asked how often do you vacuum, and I think every day. This cloth uh, really stands up good, and it lasts a lot longer if you can keep it clean. Alrighty, <clears throat> like I said earlier, I use a packing tape to uh, do these corners, and I usually use eh, two little four inch pieces, and since that's got that glue underneath there, it sticks real well to that, but it also catches those little flaps and holds them up. And it just takes a couple minutes to add this to it, which is well, well worth the time. I used to have to take one apart every once in a while to fix it because the flap would come down and then the cloth gets loose. And, and since I've been doing this, I haven't had to do that once. So. Knock on wood. It just kind of catches, like I said, those little flaps that you put underneath there and it sticks them up there really well. This is a little longer than I needed. Again, the reason I'm redoing all these right now is because we're in a, well, probably a 35, 45 day shutdown because of the uh, Corona's virus. We're hoping we can get back open pretty soon. Now, I figured it'd be nice to open up with the tables all recovered. We've, uh, I've been paying the staff to go around and paint and clean. And we did the carpets yesterday, a couple days ago. So we're putting the effort into it. Hopefully, uh, we can stay around to do it. All right, remember I told you I unscrewed it going in, so going back in, I'm screw it this way. That's just how I, so I can make sure I always get the head where it was, the foot where it was. It's not that big a deal. I'll re-level them anyway. But Oops. Need a coaster.
when you uh, when you put this clamp on, when it's wet, it'll leave a little bit of a mark. It will come out. But I like to put this coaster on there, kind of keeps it from squishing it quite so much. Because as you tighten this down, it makes it real solid. And you definitely want it solid. This little tool I bought, and I'll try to figure out where I got it from. It was like $250. Again, there's a little block you put in here in case something goes wrong. So I try to put my fingers underneath there the least amount of time as possible. And that is way easier than lifting it. Center it up. And that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, the rails I'll put on later, I won't uh, tie it into this video, but 